November 13th of 1985, the Nevado del Ruiz volcano erupted. Pyroclastic flows exploding from the crater melted the mountain's ice cap, forming volcanic mud flows and debris floats which cascaded into the river valleys below. These, consisting of three pulses, did most of the damage. Traveling at 6 meters per second, the first pulse enveloped most of the town of Armero, killing up to 20,000 people. The two later pulses weakened buildings. Another mud flow killed 1,800 people in a nearby town. In total, 23,000 people were killed and 13 villages, in addition to Armero, were completely destroyed. Loss of life was exacerbated by the authorities' failure to take costly preventive measures in the absence of clear signs of immediate danger. There had been no substantial eruption of the volcano since 1845, which contributed to the complacency. Locals called the volcano the Sleeping Lion. The death toll was increased by the lack of early warnings and unwise land use as villages were built in the likely path of mud flows. This, combined with the lack of preparedness by the communities, made it Colombia's worst natural disaster. Omaira Sanchez lived in one of the towns below the volcano. The night of the disaster, her and her family were awake, worrying about the ashfall from the eruption when they heard the sound of an approaching mud flow. After being hit by the wave, Omaira became trapped under her home's concrete and other debris and could not free herself. When rescue teams tried to help her, they realized that her legs were trapped under the house's roof. Reza para que yo pueda caminar y esta gente me ayude. Mami, te quiere mucho. Papi, hermano. For the first few hours after the mud flow hit, she was covered by concrete but got her hand through a crack in the debris. After a rescuer noticed her hand protruding from a pile of debris, he and others cleared tiles and wood over the course of the day. But each time a person pulled her, the water pooled around her, rising so that it seemed she would drown if they let her go. So rescue workers placed a tire around her body to keep her afloat. Divers discovered that Sanchez's legs were caught under the door made of bricks with her aunt's arms clutched tightly around her legs and feet. Despite her predicament, Omaira remained relatively positive, sometimes singing and others asking for sweet food and soda. At times, she was scared and prayed or cried. On the third night, the girl began hallucinating, saying that she did not want to be late for school and that she would miss a math exam. Near the end of her life, Omaira's eyes reddened, her face swelled and her hands whitened. At one point, she even asked the people to leave her so that they could get rest. Hours later, the workers returned with a pump and tried to save her, but her legs were bent under the concrete as if she was kneeling and it was impossible to free her without severing her legs. Lacking the surgical equipment to save her from the effects of amputation, the doctors present agreed that it would be more humane to let her die. In all, the 13-year-old suffered for nearly three nights, roughly 60 hours, before she died at approximately 10.05 a.m. on November 16. Sunday is gloomy My hours are slumber 